Mark chapter eight, verses thirteen to twenty-one. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have more than one loaf within them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, "Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod." And they reasoned among themselves, saying, "It's because we have no bread." But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, "Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember?" When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. Also, when I broke the seven for the four thousand, how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said, Seven. So he said to them, How is it you do not understand? Jesus left those who were looking for signs and crossed to the other side of the lake. On the way, he delivered an important lesson about the corruption and faults of the religious leaders and politicians. Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. The word leaven here represents the Pharisees' teaching. Jesus was warning the disciples against the harm such teaching could cause. Just as a little leaven permeates an entire batch of dough, so too could a little false teaching influence the disciples. The response to Jesus' warning does not make any sense. However, they thought. He was saying that they had forgotten to bring enough leftover bread. When you are preoccupied with something, it's easy to unconsciously assimilate whatever you hear to the topic that is dominating your thoughts. Haven't you experienced this before? The disciples were preoccupied with thoughts of bread and fish, and how they could sustain themselves. As they reflected on the two recent events where Jesus had miraculously fed thousands of people, they were convinced that he had no intention of being crowned the king of this world, and they began to worry about how they could make ends meet, even though they had left everything to follow Jesus. Their hearts. Was still full of the worries and wants of this world. Upon hearing the disciples' nonsensical response, Jesus rebuked their meager faith. He reminded them how he had met the physical needs of thousands by feeding them miraculously on two separate occasions. Then he asked them, "How is it you do not understand?" I recognize myself among the Pharisees who witnessed many miracles, but still demanded signs. I recognize myself among the disciples who experienced the Father's richness and compassion, but still worried about how they could survive. If we dig down to the root of our worries. We'll be surprised to find out that they are simply about bread and fish. We demand the signs of Jesus, the one who fulfills our every need. When we act like this, I hope we can hear Jesus saying to us what He said to the disciples: "How is it you do not understand? What things fill my heart?" And preoccupy my thoughts. Instead of the concerns and desires of this world, I pray that God's word will fill my heart, so that I will not respond like the faithless disciples.